If you pull up the town of Rutherford, New Jersey on Google Earth, you'll see why they call it the Borough of Trees. Although back in the 1920s, those trees weren't as mature as they are now. However, the dominant building in town still remains the William Center for the Arts, the site of the now famous Rivoli Theater. Rutherford, of course, has changed over the years, and the old Rutherford Hotel, once located at Station Square, which offered refreshments to a thirsty Rutherford baseball team, has been replaced by another refreshing house, Station Liquors. Rutherford is a town steeped in history and culture. Its famous Georgian-style train station still carries commuters to New York City and beyond, as it did in the Model T Ford era. Rutherford is full of secret walkways and hidden histories. For instance, the town's first silent movie house was the Criterion, once located on Ames Street, and now the site of the good people of the Rutherford Fire Department. In April of 1922, the Rivoli Theatre swung open its doors on Sylvan Street. Designed by Abram Prisco, theatre goers were entranced by the Rivoli's larger-than-life decor and architectural embellishments. The enormous chandelier of crystal in the dome of the auditorium, with its varied colored lights under individual control, is a thing of wondrous beauty, raved the Rutherford Republican newspaper. Well, part of the history of the Rivoli, uh, its, its roots in vaudeville and music, and as a uh, performing center for uh, people in the 20s and 30s, it's currently uh, on our timeline to be renovated and or restored. Um, we are uh, doing different restorations in order to preserve the history of the main theater. A large part of that history will be forever linked to Pulitzer Prize winning poet William Carlos Williams, who once lived and worked in Rutherford. An expert on his life and work is Della Rowland of the William Carlos Williams Symposium. In, 19, in uh, 1982, it was renamed uh, after William Carlos Williams. And in the next year, uh, in that theater, uh, they celebrated uh, his 100th birthday. Um, after that, I believe there were more than one theater companies uh, that called the center their home. Um, and yet, um, it fell into decline um, and also did not really celebrate William Carlos Williams until the 2005 uh, symposium. The annual William Carlos Williams Symposium is now a great success. To Sylvan and Spring Streets and to the William Carlos Williams Center for the Arts come scores of Williams enthusiasts as they celebrate the poet's life, history and writings. The annual symposium proves that young people are finding a new home at the Williams Center. Folk performer John Dull believes much more can be achieved. And now we need to appeal to the, the, uh, the mid-range set and we need to appeal to the young adults so that they can bring their art and feel that they have a place central to the town and to the county where they have a part in helping it develop into, you know, into its future, which, it, which is the youth. The youth is the future and we need to uh, work on that. Certainly, the Williams Center has much to offer young people. The center itself is centrally located overlooking Park Avenue in Rutherford. It's also close to boutique shops, parking centers, and fine dining restaurants. The interior of the Williams Center for the Arts is a glorious affair. And though some people may shrug off its bright, cascading early 1980s architectural design as gaudy, that too has a thought-provoking history. After a fire devastated close to one-third of the Rivoli Theatre building in 1977, the William Carlos Williams Corporation was formed in August 1978 with Fairleigh Dickinson University's Dean Worth Barry Dancy as president and Herbert Cutter of the Rutherford Chamber of Commerce named as its treasurer. Its objective was to gain private and public support for the establishment of the William Carlos Williams Center for the Performing Arts. It was time to save the center. Broadway performer Rosemary Lohr is also a Rutherford resident. Well, it's very inspiring, first of all. I didn't even know it existed until really about, I don't know, six months ago. And I walked in and I was just stunned. It's a beautiful uh, facility and a gorgeous uh, feeling inside, especially the chandelier. So I think, to me, it's very exciting to have something so close and in our town. It's very inspiring. That's the word. I think this theater has an incredible potential.
After the fire, the William Carlos Williams Center was born, with the celebrated poet at the helm of its identity. When you visit the Williams Center, you can read the wonderfully penned history wall, which tells us about the history of Rutherford, the town's prominent characters, and the long-fought struggle to keep the old Rivoli Theater alive. After all, the town's now famous son, William Carlos Williams, had become what many would describe as the poster child for Rutherford. The old theater facade may have gone, but a new vision was suddenly emerging through the town's famous poet. William Carlos Williams um, was a lifelong resident of Rutherford. Um, he was uh, also a physician and known to many of the townspeople simply as Doc Williams. Um, a lot of them didn't even know that he wrote poetry, um, which came to him throughout his work day and uh, which he would scribble down on uh, little scraps of paper including uh, prescription pads. There are lots of prescription pads that uh, have first drafts of poems uh, on them. William Carlos Williams was born in Rutherford in 1883 and died in 1963. Rutherford has recently been deemed a literary landmark. The Rutherford Library boasts a plaque to this effect. He had a full-time practice and still managed to find time to write some over 25 volumes of poetry. He wrote plays, essays, uh, musical uh, compositions. He wrote uh, an autobiography, a memoir of his mother. Um, just uh, it was amazing output. Uh, and he also was a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, author. Um, he served for a short time as Poet Laureate of the United States. Um, he was ahead of his time. He believed very firmly in an American voice at a time when uh, the poetry of England and that sort of voice was more popular. Um, um, he believed that the American voice and the American idioms um, was the, a true American poetry. and thus changed the course of 20th century American poetry. He's considered by many to be the father of uh, 20th century American poetry. Um, he lived in this town. A lot of people didn't know him, um, but he preferred to live here. Um, therefore, he not only belongs to the world, but he belongs to Rutherford. The house in which the world-famous poet once lived stands at number 9 Ridge Road. It bears an historical plaque and remains forever on the itinerary of thousands of the poet's admirers. Back at the Williams Center, it's business as usual as the artifacts, interiors and windows wake to yet another beautiful Rutherford morning. The old street-facing ticket office gets a good dusting and this non-profit establishment takes a deep breath once again in the hope to hear the good news of a new donation. Finances for the center are provided by a number of different sources. They come from the borough of Rutherford. Uh, they also come from Bergen County uh, Board of Freeholders and also from uh, private donations. And uh, also we raise money uh, as a result of the fact that we run uh, first-run cinemas. The Center Cinema, which affords the community at large the thrill of watching the latest Hollywood blockbuster movies as they are released, is a fabulous amenity in Rutherford. Three state-of-the-art cinemas are presently under renovation to include the refurbishment of well-worn screens, seating, and projection equipment. The Williams Center, like any of its kind, continues to be maintained by the generous donations of people like you. In 1977, fire may have been a tragic blow for those who marveled over the theater's exterior marble and limestone facade embellished with leaded glass and copper plating, but the great chandelier is still shimmering inside the auditorium's dome, and the theater that once resounded with the antics of Abbott and Costello and the strings and horns of the Glenn Miller Orchestra is as grand as ever, with a stage said by many to be comparable to some of Broadway's finest. As far as the experience of being on that stage, it felt very much like being on Broadway. It was very exciting. And Rosemary Law should know, the performer is one of Broadway's most iconic stars and sees the old Rivoli Theatre as more than a diamond in the rough. To me, uh, you can do anything in a theatre as long as it has seats and lights and sound and, and the, um, the cosmetic, I call it cosmetic stuff, that can be added later. That's not as important to me as a performer. 
Well, as performer, the ambiance at the Williams Center is very fitting for what we do. We're, we're acoustic music. Acoustic is natural, it's of the people, and this theater has that ambience. Uh, it has a history when you, when you sit there in, in front of a, a crowd, you're with, you know, you're with history when you're performing. It's, it fits so well with folk music. We've had the opportunity to bring some great stars to the Williams Center, and, and uh, they've performed beautifully on this stage because the acoustics are so good. And, you know, you've had Peter, Paul, and Mary there. You've had Richie Havens there. You've had Tom Paxton there. Pete Seeger has performed there multiple times. You've had Floyd Vivino, who really should be in the New Jersey uh, Entertainment Hall of Fame. You've had several different artists over the uh, 20-year period. Rutherford resident and entertainer producer Frank Del Vecchio is equally as impressed. Having a theater such as the Williams Center in Rutherford is a treasure that uh, all of us in the town of Rutherford and surrounding communities should really appreciate, should really um, uh, take advantage of and, and, and do something with uh, and bring in as many entertainers as we possibly can. In 2005, Frank Del Vecchio did just that with an evening of opera stars, which was held at the Williams Center for the Arts and which received instant mass appeal. So the house can witness enthusiastic audience figures, but more support is needed for events at the Williams Center to truly flourish. The most important part of any arts center is for people to take advantage of the center and to utilize uh, the facility and come to the movies and come to the live events that we have. I think that's the most important part of any arts center. Arts centers need to be supported by the population through attendance and through coming to different events. Dazzling like a beacon to arts and entertainment lovers everywhere, the Williams Center for the Arts is entering a new era and invites you to be a part of that future. Well, as, as we look around and we see this beautiful theater, and we have to see a history, we have to see a chandelier, we have to hear acoustics that are phenomenal acoustics, and we have to take this gift that's been given us, that's been saved from ruin, and a dream has carried it to this point, and now dreams and finances have to meet and we have to bring this theater into a glorious time for the future for this area for our town for our kids and for all genres of art so that we have something that everybody can be proud of in this area scattered throughout the old rivoli theater are brilliant antiquarian motifs and relief works that remain symbols of a bygone past restoration is underway but at a cost that's where you as a sponsor and patron can come in i like to see the williams center be able to sustain itself uh, with help of donations but mostly through audiences that look forward to come to the theater and hear uh, the equivalent of what you can get on Broadway. It is no different than any other performing arts center. Um, we are constantly looking for sponsors and donors and patrons to uh, provide uh, that funding uh, by means of tax-deductible uh, donations to the center. Even the Metropolitan and, and the New York uh, City Opera, you know, are supported by uh, donations. I don't know of any uh, uh, th opera group or uh, that is that doesn't survive, uh, you know, without the help of donations. Uh, besides raising money, we we have to raise the awareness, the zeitgeist, so that people know, wow, we have an incredible uh, facility here and we can use it in a lot of different ways. We don't have to just use it as a performance uh, center, we can use it to educate and to facilitate uh, competitions of all different types. And I think it would be really, it would, it would, I think it would make everybody in the community feel really good about themselves. We're not just the bedroom community for New York City. We have an art center that's our very own. It is extremely important 
to keep the memory of William Carlos Williams alive for a number of reasons. One is he is a premier 20th century poet who lived here, as Neil Baldwin, one of his biographers, uh, told me, adamantly. He could have lived anywhere in the, in the world. He was that um, prestigious. He chose to live in Rutherford. So I think uh, it's very important that Rutherford keeps his memory alive as its uh, most famous son, um, also because he was a world famous poet and um, very influential in the voice of American poetry in the 20th century. Aside from that, um, it is important to me that he be remembered. The Williams, Car the Williams Center is named after him. It is important that the Williams Center also uh, thrive because it is named after him and because it represents what to me is the most important aspect of civilization, which is culture. Um, and if we do not have theater, if we don't have places like the library, like the Williams Center, where culture can thrive, then we as a civilization are we're monkeys. <laughs> we're not all monkeys, of course, and many of the good people of Rutherford nourish a flourish for the arts, as can be seen throughout this gorgeous leafy town. My journey through Rutherford has taught me a few things about the down-to-earth goodness and generosity of the people who live, love, and work here. There's a strong sense of history in this town and the surrounding communities, and history is always worth protecting. So the next time you happen to be walking through the Borough of Trees, come visit the William Center for the Arts and witness for yourself the new and refreshing fresh era of activity that is presently being heralded in. Donations and gifts to the William Carlos Williams Center for the Arts are tax deductible and are very much part of what has maintained the Williams Center throughout its turbulent past. The miracle of the William Carlos Williams Center for the Arts is simply the fact of its very survival through decades of change, construction and demolition around us. Pledge your support today. The Rivoli Theatre and the William Carlos Williams Center for the Arts must remain with us. For without the culture, history and knowledge that we glean from the teachings of the past, we are, each and every one of us, bound to a future of little reflection. Pledge your support today. Thank you.